Many people have been involved with the resurgence of the Kings and their success. No one more so than Dean Lombardi. He graduated from Tulane Law School, became an agent, and by his own admission, not a very good one. Then he moved into the front office of the Minnesota North Stars before ending up in San Jose. He built the Sharks into a perennial power, then they fired him out of the clear blue. He spent some time as a scout with the Flyers before his phone rang. We'll let Dean pick it up from there in the conversation. It's never a blessing when someone loses their job. You work for the Flyers and all of a sudden you get hot. Tim Lightwicky brought you in, but there were other teams as well that were interested, right? You're right. It was really strange, you know, like, you know, you go three years and nothing, and all of a sudden, uh, boom, you know, it was the Islanders, the Boston Bruins, uh, St. Louis Blues, the LA Kings, and, you know, all of a sudden I'm running back and forth, and... Um, was it clear-cut you were coming here? No, uh, I wanted to, to go to the Boston Bruins. You know, for a Massachusetts kid who grew up idolizing Bobby Orr and Phil Esposito and those guys, and when I really sat down and thought about it, it was, it was one thing to be part of a s historic franchise like the Bruins or the Islanders, but then what started to appeal to me was, you know what, what about a team that had never won? To, to be able to take a team that hadn't won. You know, with that, have a, to start it from scratch, so to speak, and be the first GM to do it. The more I thought about it, I said, you know what, that might be pretty neat. Dean Lombardi. So Tim Lightwicky gets you on board, and then he announces you're going to win in three years. I didn't say that. <laughs> but he said that. So for people who have had long-time season tickets, one of them being me, you're sitting there going, all right, well, in three years, here we go. Didn't happen in three years. <laughs> and you're blushing. Why? Um, well, um, that just wasn't practical. Um, you know, let's just say I was a little overzealous. Um, I guess there's a little salesmanship in there. <laughs> you had one year to run your contract. The team didn't have the start you had hoped. You had to change coaches. You knew the minute you made the decision to make the change yeah. that Daryl Sutter was the guy. Was there anyone else? I looked at two other things, but you know what? I just knew in my heart that, uh, that this was the right guy. Did you have to convince Daryl? I had a moral dilemma because um, I knew I was going to change the coach after that homestand, uh, but I also knew I couldn't get Daryl Sutter for two weeks. and. Um, and because he had made a commitment to his son with Down syndrome, and he said, Dean, I'll, I'll do it, but I, am no, I made promises to Chris, and I'm not going to go back on those promises. But that's Daryl. You know, as much as, you know, there's not many coaches who would say that today. When a lot of, you hear the family card played so much in our society today, and it's, it's a card. But for him, it's real. But in terms of going forward with Daryl, you're never sure, but... I had a pretty good feel that this was the right guy. The Kings are the Kings! The run to the Stanley Cup, and you got to hoist the cup. Emotionally, what was that like for you? It was better than I ever dreamed of. And that's probably the simplest way to put it, that it was better than I could have ever imagined, far surpassed what I, what I could ever imagine. <laughs> that night in the locker room, um, you're so proud of your players, you know. Uh, you know, those guys are, I feel like, my sons. Um, I am bonded with them the rest of my life, and nobody's ever going to take that away from us. And that night where, you know, we stood in that room with a bunch of them and just stayed there, with, you know, having the beers, I, I wouldn't trade that for the world. You could put me in the Taj Mahal or whatever, but to be in that smelly locker room with them for uh, those 20 guys, it ain't even close.